<laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome today. We are uh, interviewing, uh, we have a special couple guests with us, uh, Sheila and her husband, Darren. Uh, first of all, I'm Dr. Maggie Yu, and I am a functional medicine physician focusing my area of practice in autoimmune disease, inflammation, and hormone balance. And we have an online program that helps people transform their health naturally, including autoimmune diseases. And today, um, we have uh, a couple that is going to be joining us who recently, um, Sheila just finished uh, our Launchpad program. And so we're going to be bringing her and her husband on, and we're going to talk about what her journey has been and what Erin's role has been in that as well. Now, wherever you're watching from, please give me a thumbs up, give me a heart. And right now, if you know anybody that could benefit from learning from a functional medicine approach to turn around their autoimmune disease, their inflammation, their hormones, their gut health, go ahead and put their names in the comment section right now because sharing is caring and raising awareness is how we beat this. And when you post their name underneath, they'll, be, uh, they'll receive a notification and they can watch this later. If you're joining us on YouTube or you're joining us on our podcast, welcome and thank you for joining us. Today, I'm gonna introduce Sheila really quickly and, and Darren and then have them introduce themselves. Um, Sheila recently just finished um, our Launchpad program about a month ago, and she had been dealing with um, eye issues and loss of her, um, more and more visual loss over um, the last decade, two dec decade to two. And she struggled also with thyroid cancer. And her husband, Darren, is joining us. Um, he's an owner of a construction company. Uh, not an owner, he works for, with a construction company and um, has been, uh, we're, we're going to talk about his role as being a partner in supporting someone going through all these complicated health issues that are very difficult for people in conventional medicine to solve. So Sheila, Darren, I'd love for you guys to introduce yourselves. Hi, I am Sheila and um, live in Nebraska with my husband, Darren. And well, just like Maggie said, just finished going through the eight-week program. Very thrilled with all of the benefits of everything that I learned, all of the education and the community. So, yeah. So I'm her husband, Darren, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, again, I've uh, uh, been married to this fabulous lady for nearly 25 years, and um, I have. Uh, seen many ups and downs when it has come to her health. And, um, and again, if you're um, with someone that is in a, a partnership or a relationship with someone and when you see them struggle with things that they can't find answers to, um, obviously you, you as, as a supporting spouse or a significant other, um, you kind of along for the journey. Um, and, and you're always kind of hoping that there's some aha moments and so here to kind of share some of the things that I've seen through Sheila's journey. So, Well, I love this because um, Sheila, I mean, how long have you been dealing with this autoimmune visual loss for? How long? The autoimmune visual loss is actually somewhat unknown because I knew um, going to an eye appointment that there was maybe something wrong but didn't realize that the vision in my left eye was nearly gone. I had no idea. So that was approximately 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so I, it could have been a year before, two years before, yeah. but um, thyroid cancer, um, been dealing with that now over 20 years. No. Yeah. But, yeah. 2005. Yeah. So, so autoimmune issues, visual issues, cancer mm -hmm. issues, these are yeah. really the uh, plague of the 20th century, basically, in the 21st century. And we're seeing a humongous rise in cancer and autoimmune disease and inflammation uh, related health issues. So yeah. why, after dealing with this for 20 years, did you not find answers? I mean, you've, how many specialists have you seen? How many doctors have you seen for this? I mean, what is, was that journey? Just give me a quick synopsis of that two decades. Um, a lot. Um, been to the Mayo Clinic, the Mason Eye Institute, um, various doctors, a neuro-ophthalmologist, um, and currently I am a patient, I guess, 
uh, I call myself a lab rat at the University of Iowa ophthalmology department in their um, research department. Mm -hmm. So um, I go there a couple times a year just to make sure that nothing has drastically changed. Yeah. But, um, you know, along with this whole autoimmune journey comes the anxiety and the depression, which um, yeah. the program also helped me a lot um, with too, with um, changing my mindset. So I just wanted to throw that out there too. So we already did a video while you were just, I think week four and five in the program yeah. about I guess, did you even join the program thinking that your vision was going to improve? Was that even a hope that you, or expectation? It, oh, it was a hope. It definitely was a hope as far as um, thinking that anything would change. Um, it, I was unsure. But the vision that I have left has is clearer. It definitely is clearer, especially when um i and we just recently got back from vacation so slipped up a few times with the gluten-free mm -hmm. and i can tell there is a huge difference um when i'm not following the things that i need to stay away from you know exact cause and effect now yes i do yeah exactly. so let's go through a list i mean a list of things that improve so i know that your vision has been improving we knew yes. in week four or five to your yes. surprise that it was and we did a full video on that if you guys want to watch it uh, you can go back to the archives and, and find that video but can you list a couple other things that has really dramatically improved just in the two short months oh fatigue my fatigue is is so much better the depression um is better um, just my overall energy level. I, you know, want to get up and do things and, um, just stay busy, um, compared to before it was like, if I wasn't feeling well, it was just easy to just sit on the couch and put, put on Netflix and just veg with that. But, um, no, my energy level is up. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a dramatic change. Okay, so I know that from an objective standpoint, tons of these symptoms have improved that you didn't even expect, okay? We, right. we, we know that, we've done a video on that, but I have a question, which was, I mean, this is dramatic, life-changing stuff that happened. And I wanna ask initially, I wanna, I'm gonna ask Darren this question, which is, you know, a lot of people, when they first learn about our program, it's an online group coaching program, right? And this is a completely different way of approaching healthcare than the last 20 years of healthcare that you received that have not helped, right? Okay? So it's a very non-traditional model. And I feel like clearly an educational model to healthcare is the missing link and is the holy grail. And yet nobody is doing that, okay? As for especially something as complex as autoimmunity or cancer or hormones. So what, who first learned about our program between the two of you? I'm curious the chronology of this. Who found, who found out about me first? It was me. I was um, just on Facebook and came, I came across one of your videos yeah. and I was watching it one night in bed and Darren was like, what are you watching? And I'm like, oh, it's just, it's just a video that I, I found because I knew he is not a huge social media person to begin with. And so if I told him, oh, there's this doctor on Facebook and he would have just, I saw if I would have rolled, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> I so, so you figured it was going to be a, so it was a hard sell to actually have Darren learn more even, or go the next step of getting on the phone with us. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm a doubting Thomas, no doubt. Um, you know, Tell me about that. So many people that are watching right now are doubting Thomas's or, or skeptics. So I want to hear your perspective because you represent a huge proportion of people out there watching this. So as much as she suffered with all this the last two decades, why were, what had created the doubting Thomas? Well, okay. So you kind of introduced me as a, as a contractor. So more specifically, um, I, I work for a restoration contractor. So mm -hmm. we, we fix things. Um, we fix mm -hmm. masonry and concrete and a aging structures. So the thing about it is, is that you don't go patch or plug a hole in the wall unless you know what caused it. Yes. So, so, so part of that is, is that 
it's tough to treat, and I'm, I'm sorry, um, from a, you know, someone that has watched their wife roll out from having her thyroid removed and, and then having to tell them that, you know, yes, they found cancer. And so your thyroid, you know, you know, all of those things and emotions that go with it, uh, that, that nasty word. I mean, you know, the word autoimmune in our household has also taken the same toll. Sounds like um, a death sentence, right, to most people. Well, I mean, we have a daughter who, who's who been diabe- type 1 diabetic for 15 which is years. Yeah, mm-hmm. Which is autoimmune. Yeah, which is, you know, not only shaped her life, but it's shaped, it's definitely shaped our the path of our life. Yeah. I mean, we, we I, I, you know, we moved from Lincoln, Nebraska to Kansas City. So she looked at stay home and, and, and we picked up our family and moved just to, you know, to take a different job and continue raising our children in the, the environment that we wanted to. So, so again, I guess I'm, I am a, uh, I'm a pessimist, which is an optimist with experience. So again, you gotta, you gotta kind of show me. And, and, and again, I, like I said, I, I can't sit here and, and, and tell you that, you know, that the, the journey that I went with Sheila um, was, is, as emotional as hers uh just that i notice little things differently and 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 again it's like um just when you start to see the mindset i know that's a key word that you guys use a lot in in your um in your in your uh, online modules and so forth but i i I can't express enough when someone has dealing with something when they find other people that you know not the old misery loves company kind of theory but the actual fact that there are people out there and, and when, not only when you notice something, but they notice it for you, that it, it, it does change the mindset. The mind is a very powerful thing, mm-hmm. very powerful thing. And so again, yes, there has to be a, a lot of, con- there had to be a lot of convincing, but at the same time, I wasn't gonna about tell my wife who's, who's exhausted so many different efforts and I know that she is diligent at this stage in her life just to want to be, feel good. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, so. So what I'm hearing is, is that there was, you were, it, it was, took, a, you said it took a lot of convincing, oh, you know, but clearly right now you're seeing the results of this, the fruits of this. And that's she, why. You're yeah. a different person. I mean, you're you're talking to someone that <laughs> you're, you're you're talking to someone that 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 relies on thyroid medicine to get out of bed in the morning. And so when she, you know, typically if you have anybody that's had their thyroid removed, and you know, um, we have a five bedroom house, and you know, two dogs, and so the the, the just Sheila managing um, everything that we that we have going on, maintaining the house and cooking and and just taking care of us as a family, um, she definitely can now work me. And I, I lost my hair, but I still have my thyroid. So. <laughs> well, so I want to go back to something, which is um, there's a lot of skeptics out there, people that need convincing. So what convinced you to actually support her to join this program? I, I wasn't about to, to crush my wife's only hope to, to, to find another avenue to feel human Mm. Um, you know again i think from a support standpoint you know i I do understand money um as you know we're a single family income and i'm very fortunate to have um a a good career and and so forth but it 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 is one of those things is that between family and support um and different things that are out there i think that you know um you shouldn't make haste decisions, but good thought out made decisions um, as you know, can, can be done. I think that there, there are, there are options and opportunities for all people. Um, but it really depends on, I guess the one question is, is that if you're making the investment, um, the person that you're making the investment in has to be investment worthy. And my wife, no doubt is investment worthy. Um, because that person that I, you know, that I fell in love with and the person I love, there is nothing more miserable than looking at the person sitting next to you along your life journey and they just feel like they want to check out. 
Mm. So it's, it's hard not to want to help. It's hard not to check out, but you, again, um, you find ways, you, you, you know, again, money is an obstacle, but there's always avenues. So what I'm hearing it was that, um, the outcome of having, well, first of all, you said we were your wife's last hope. And a lot of people do look at us and they say, you know, like I, I, you know, I don't, I don't have any hope left. You're literally my last hope and don't give me false hope. People actually say that. So one of the, sometimes husbands will say that, you know, or, or wives will be like, don't give my partner false hope being protective. Whoa. And yeah. go ahead, Darren. I oh. say the last time um, that we were at the University of Iowa for an appointment, I did. I get to the point where I, I need them to talk to me, but I ask them just point blank, am I in the right place? Is this where I need to be? Is there someplace I, someplace else I need to be going? Yeah. And um, they said, of course, you know, you're at the right place. This is, uh, this is where I would want my, you know, my, my wife, my daughter. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I just felt like there's still something else that I, needed to be looking into well what you were missing was a functional approach to treat the root cause of what was causing the cancer and the vision loss and the depression and the fatigue yes which is exactly. what functional medicine is and that fundamentally is missing from the conventional way that we treat all these chronic conditions yes current medicine is great as an acute care urgent care type of right. business business to deal with a broken hurt body part but it is horrible at treating complex chronic diseases with multi systems that are linked and root causes that are all linked with each other like a spider web mm -hmm. right that's what oh. was missing yes and to me having people have a strategic way going through our model to approach each area and solve each area and see how they all fit together is the missing link to chronic disease. It's amazing. And how it all fits together and seeing, you know, realizing, you know, where the mindset plays and blood sugars play in and then your food sensitivities and hormones and just everything. It's, um, yeah. And, you know, currently, you know, I have so many doctors that they don't communicate, <laughs> you know, they don't talk. And yeah. so I'm yeah. going to that point where now I know what to do. You know, there's, it's amazing. Um, you know, and Maggie, I think I've mentioned this to you before is that the, the biggest frustration um, is, you know, in other industries is how information is shared. And you know, we moved from Kansas City back to Omaha, and then in Omaha, you have to find a doctor that's within your, your network, and then you go to that doctor hoping that, 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 that they grasp or see something that maybe they've seen in their career and they grab onto it. Or, you know, there were some very caring people mm -hmm. that tried diligently um, to assist with Sheila, but it was beyond their, their tool belt or what they had. And they did direct us. And the thing that still amazes me is going from Kansas City to Omaha to Iowa City, which is all it separates about a four and a half hour drive, which is not not far for a drive in the Midwest. But it, it, it people didn't know. I mean, the doctor in Kansas City didn't know to say, oh, go to Iowa City. So it's yeah. just it's just the exchange of information that um, that frustrates you. I mean, the Internet's a powerful thing and you think you should yeah. be able to find anything on it. But but it, it, it's, it's um, it, as advanced as we have become, exchange of information is still so complex and so crowded. You know, it's interesting talking about Google research and people feel like in the age of information, because you can Google any question and get an answer within two minutes, that somehow that gives you a lot of power um, in, in healthcare at, or anything. And I'm gonna tell you that that's the scariest thing on the planet in some ways, because information without the sermon to how to integrate and knowing which pieces of those information actually apply to you can right. be extremely costly and dangerous. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's kind of the same in the restoration industry. You may have someone go on YouTube and learn how to fix one thing, but they're not looking at the cause of it. And they don't realize that right behind that one thing is something that could cause $50,000 of water damage in their house within the next week. No, you're, you're, and you're absolutely correct. So you can't, you can't go patch a hole or plug a hole unless you know what caused the hole. And I mean, um, again, it's, it's really um, kind of, you know, you gotta be careful not to, to you know, to, to choose words, but it is amazing to see how within a very short period of time, um, the things you're consuming and how you're consuming and, and when you're consuming and making sure that your body is, is getting the things that it needs, how, again, you know, I, I can't speak, I can't take a look inside Sheila's eyes and do a visual field test, but when you see someone's face light up and they're, and they're, they're not looking like they're struggling with things um, from a mindset, uh, regardless of internal health, external, the way that someone's externally looking at the world is, is, is a hopeful thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you say that's all we have is hope. Um, you know, that's all we're hope any of us have is just hoping for a better tomorrow. Yeah. Can I tell you one of my quotes is I say that hope is great to start your day with as breakfast, but I end the day with results, with education, results, and outcomes, period. Right. Mm -hmm. And people are like, don't fan my false hope. I'm like, I do nothing of that sort. That's breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, what, I mean, was that one of your concerns, Darren, during our, our uh, initial calls? Was it like, are you going to fan my wife's false hope? I, it, it, it was because the last thing that, you know, um, you wanted to, to do is, you know, it's like, tell, so, you know, trying to convince someone that is terminally ill uh, that, that they're going to see next year or see Christmas. And, and you know, mm -hmm. people sometimes don't want to, you don't have to tell people what they want to hear. You know, I think from a, from a, from a, being a doctor, I mean, you, honesty and transparencies are, are a, a big thing. And, Yes. You know, I would tell you from any industry that, you know, I, there's a lot of things that, that, that Sheila has gained through. And, you know, one of them um, through this whole thing is I did see a lot of your ded dedication and your diligence of, of how serious and how, how driven you are to, to share the, 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 what you've learned about and educate. This and educate. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, though, I not only saw it from my wife, but my, my you know, through this whole, this whole ordeal. She's got friends um, now that she can call and she's been in touch with and they, they lean on each other. And so when you have someone that you've met in Australia uh, or yeah, Idaho. This is all yeah. people she met in our program as a part of a community. Yes. So I, I want to say that, you know, these people, though, they've never stepped foot in the same room. They're as close as, as sisters, not because, because that they, they, they share, yes, a common, um, a, you know, a common situation or a common disease, but they also share common hope now. And, yeah. and they have not only did, did they've experienced the transformation or the, the new, the things that they've gone through themselves personally, but they've watched other people go through their transformation. Yes, yeah. which is huge. So. Huge. Which is why I love transparency. So here's the deal. If we weren't delivering on everything that we said we would, if you weren't seeing the actual outcomes in the people in the program going through it with you at the same time, what do we have? Nothing. That's false hope. So for me, the best evidence that I can show is people as they go through the program and you sharing your experience like this and you seeing Sukes or Ambers or, you know, Jennifer's, uh, yes. different people that you went through the program, you're seeing the transformation in them as you're going through the program. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that kind of evidence is really important because it's transparency. I don't just tell you Sheila got her, is getting her vision to be clearer and clearer. I actually am going to interview and show you Sheila and I'm going to ask her husband also. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and um, you know, I, I, I go back and think about, again, these ladies, um, you know, someone's, someone else has always got it worse, and I mean, 
I see my wife and, and again, I don't think of, she's in, in any physical pain. Um, she's in, you know, a situation where, again, we rely very he heavily on our sight. Some of these other women were in excruciating pain. Yes. Yeah. Arthritis. I mean, there's not a lot of people that Girl are so. Derma. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, I, like I said, um, you know, it goes back to hope. And then, then, you know, the other word would be accountability. Not only being, some people are, are, are hard to hold themselves accountable to certain things, yeah. but when other people try to hold them accountable in a group yeah. setting, that's very mm -hmm. powerful. It is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask those people that are watching right now, if you're an alumni that's gone through a program, if you're currently in our program, please in the comments section, let people know that you, what your experience has been, that you are going through a program, have been through our program, because that's social proof. I think that's really important. And these are all real people. Um, what I want to do is, um, and for those of you that are watching to learn more about our program, go to drmaggieu.com. You can learn more, see a free training on it. You could join our Facebook group, which is transform autoimmune disease naturally as well. Um, I want to ask a couple questions. This is the section where I want to ask, um, a couple things. Number one is, is that what do you think has changed in terms of your relationship with each other? as a result of having gone through this program and health transformation, because that dynamic must have really had to change and did change. Um, you know, I want to say that uh, probably the, the one thing is, is when your, your partner um, feels better about themselves, um, they're, uh, you know, they're much more approachable um their mindset is tolerable still, and more tolerable, tolerable. <laughs> that's, that's probably a good word i mean but at the same time they're not as irritable either um you know um you know there's a lot of things that go on through the day that 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 just happen um and you know they frustrate people but when you're not feeling good those frustrations are are very much um ex, ex, you know become simple things become bigger things yeah. and so just being able to, like I said, the, uh, the mindset and, you know, one of the, the phrases that Sheila taught me through this was just the terminology of an ant, which is an automatic negative thought. Yes. Thank you. You remember that. I use it every day. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, again, I've, I've been able to, to, to take what Sheila's mindset was and, you know, again, people, when they, they realize things or they have insightful things to share, they, 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 by, you know, when you touch someone with a smile or you touch someone with a, a, a better way of looking at things or just an understanding, um, it, it assures you that, that you're not alone. Um, and that someone understands. And, you know, again, I guess I kind of feel like I, you know, Sheila's a, has always been a fabulous listener. Um, I've been very fortunate to have a, a wife that is a good listener and she cares. Um, but you put her in a better mindset and she, you know, it just becomes exponentially greater. So. What do you think, Sheila? Thank you. Um, I, I definitely think it has allowed us to have better communication. I'm um, less irritable <laughs> to be approachable um, with things, but now I'm also able to, you know, speak more <laughs> where you know i'm not so tired and i don't want to do that or you know make up an excuse that you know i don't you know for whatever reason and now it's you know things are better it's still a work in progress it's i mean it was a long time a long long time so still a work in progress you know for someone that has lost some vision i mean again sheila um, you can still see um, you know, a lot of her peripheral stuff has changed, but just think about the, the unnervingness about walking into a new place and, and having to feel confident about it. You either can be very hesitant and, and, and you then become scared or you can have confidence and say, that's I, how I used to be. I was you know, very, very hesitant. Um, I'm much more confident now. Um, walking into newer places. I'm still a little scared, but um, definitely the confidence is better walking into 
to new places that we've been to. True. She and herself has gained more confidence. And Darren, for you to see her have be in a better mood and have more confidence, be in less pain and have way more energy. I mean, this has really changed. This is the beginning of a huge growth spurt in your relationship. It is. Yeah, it, is. It, it, it very much, it very much is. And we're not far away from being empty nesters. And, you know, you always, um, you know, you, we never are the people that we were 25 years ago, but you, you, you want that, you want that, the root of that person to be there. Um, he may not be, but I might, I want to <laughs> be there. <laughs> very true. <laughs> you know, very true. And, and, you know, at the end of the day is that, we all we all look forward to retirement or you know spending our golden years and so forth like that but there are a lot of people that are probably stuck in, in a mindset of i wish i wasn't here tomorrow and that's 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 a very dangerous place to be yeah so you know you. um again i can only speak to what i've seen and and you know um there's something to be said that when you're educated upon what has gone on, because there's a lot of people that have theories about stuff. Um, you get tired of the, the theorizing and sometimes you got to put some things into play and, and, well, and in a very exactly short which pieces to put into place. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Um, you know, again, Sheila was very accountable and, and, you know, to Maggie, you're very accountable. It's not like, like you, you know, your program is, hey, this is going to be on this certain time at this certain, you know, you know, time zone and this certain, and, and again, there was nothing ever missed. So you've, you know, your education and the people that, that work with you to deliver the message, there was, there was, there was dedication. You can obviously tell that people mm -hmm. are inspired to help. They're ready to make that change. They, they, they're excited help. about it. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, it's people want to share when, you know, people, successful people breed successful people, yes. you know, so. And then there's another piece, which is I say success leaves clues. True. Mm -hmm. And everyone's success yeah. look, looks yeah. different too, though. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's success, what Sheila's success looks like may not, it may not, you know, be, um, exactly what she was hoping for, but it gave her hope. And, and again, it gave her the tools, uh, again, feeling or, you know, people say, Oh, you feel this way. Yeah. But you, you know, feeling has a big part of it and, and your body tells you, you know, there's as a little kid, you learn what you are, you are what you eat. That's, a, there's a lot of that. I mean, it truly, yeah. it, we are what we so I have a question for you guys, because you know one of the things I teach people is that education is the most important thing. And when you educate yourself around health, which is a model that doesn't exist, not only do you help you, I say minimum, you help three generations, which is a generation above you, which is huge inflammation, autoimmune, cancer, hormonal mess. And then genetically also and environmentally, the generation below you is at extremely high risk. Yes. And I say every single piece of education that you invest in yourself, you're going to be affecting people in other generations. So I have a question. I'm going to take a roll of the dice. How has this affected any other generation in your family line? What has happened as a result of you doing this for yourself? I think um, for sure with our daughter, um, she actually had done a food sensitivity test prior to me actually joining the program. Mm -hmm. but really didn't really go gangbusters with it, you know, now that I was getting the knowledge and understanding, you know, working on the mindset and everything and helping her through all of this, too, we were kind of learning together a little bit, some things, but she actually now... Um, she's lost weight she's using less insulin which is huge um, her a1c was the lowest she just had an endocrinologist appointment uh, last week 6.0 she hasn't ever been that low since and, she, and note guys her daughter cassidy did not do our program sheila did <laughs> 
Yeah, so um, yeah. it's interesting because I believe that uh, someone that's considered not even type two diabetic, uh, you, you have to be 5.7 um, or below. So 6.0 is phenomenal for, for someone. For who's someone yeah. who's type one. For a type one diabetic is unheard of. Yes, she but was, not in uh, our program, not in our program. It's unheard of in the conventional world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, um, and, and um, you know, you're talking about uh, someone that also deals with other types of, like Hashimoto's and, and um, you know, obviously anxiety runs in both of our families, mm -hmm. you know, and depression is a real thing. And, um, you know, again, it's a lot of what... There's a lot of mindset talks that go on. She's in college right now and so she's taking some tougher classes and so there's a lot of mindset talk that goes on too are you teaching uh, me? oh breathing and just yeah. stopping the negative thoughts and automatically yep make it more positive and yeah and yeah. she's getting it she's getting it like so. to me like the most important thing to realize is, is that your brain is a piece of real estate there's only so much space in there. So it's very expensive and powerful. So, and you have choice what lives there. What is in that piece of real estate you have choice mm -hmm. around. So I'm telling people, it's like, choose your thoughts really wisely. Yes. Choose what lives in there. Choose what energy from other people and situations you allow in there. And you absolutely have choice. And how yeah. powerful it is it to realize and practice that every single freaking day. It is. Yeah. It is when I go back through all of my information, um, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was module one or module two, but you have, um, at the time I went through the program, we had to write down like our level one through six people and how they- Layers of your boundaries yes. in your life. And the boundaries. And I am amazed at how often people switch in, in the my- movement in the boundaries. Yes. And rather than it happen to you, you can have it happen for you by making choice to yes. choose I, who you want to move out a layer, who you want to move in a layer. Yes, exactly. And I love it. I, that was a huge, huge thing for me too. So I'm going through that with her a little bit, somewhat with our son too, you know, when he wants to talk with us, cause you know, he's a 16 year old <laughs> boy <laughs> who hides in his room. So um, yep. but yeah, he gets bits and pieces. So I have some fine, a final, one final question for both of you. Okay. Which is that, um, you know, people say, you know, initially when you learn about the programs an online program is a doctor on the internet, it sounds, um, there's, a, Darren needed a lot of convincing and Sheila, I'm sure you needed a lot of proof. So what would, you, for anybody who's watching this video right now, they're gonna be coming from that same place. What do you think is a piece of advice that you could give them to help them actually be able to make the leap to invest in their own education to get out of whatever sickness or illness or symptoms they're dealing with? What is one piece of good advice that you could give somebody who was sitting in your shoes two months ago? When you, you feel like you're at the the last chance. There's n there's nothing left. There always was. There's always something else, and this was it for me. It was. I knew it in my gut. There was just something when I started watching the videos. I'm like, this is it. I really think this is it. And you got to be committed. You you got to know you're ready. And I was so ready so um you know i guess you know from you know um the the financial side of things is that um there you know as we approach 50 um you know we uh we you go through life and you you, you try to listen to all the advice you can and you people accumulate things and people have things or different services and so forth. And there's always means and, and ways uh, to, to make investments. Um, I mean, if someone came up to you and said, Hey, uh, if you could give me X amount of dollars, you know, and, and it's a great business investment, there'd be a lot of people that would run out and do on a credit card. Because it's a dollar return on your investments, because that's right. Right? right? So the hard part, is, the hard part of it, it is, is that um, 
you know, in our situation, you know, we're, we're right now, you know, Sheila's worked in the past, but we're a single family income. And we just, you know, we looked at it and said, we have ways to, to um, pull from our investments or, you know, to, to, to move money around in order to do this. And, and that's what we did. So we, we thought through it. We talked about the investments we had made. And we essentially made a decision about, yes, we can do that. And, and it's going to require us to do this and require us to do that. And again, um, people, if you plan, you can do anything. Um, so, so hopefully again, people understand that, that, you know, one of the few things that people don't do is that so in, it, investing in themselves is the, is yeah. the, it should be the easiest. Sometimes we, yes. we make it the hardest. It's investing in yourself and your health. I mean, I, you know, created my dream board through the program and there's things I want to see. There's things I want to do. And I think she's probably more confident about, about that. I think, I think a lot of times people, you ask them what they, what they want out of life and they don't, they don't allow themselves to dream. Um, because they're so stuck in the reality of feeling bad. Yeah. So, yeah. I think, you know, so. Thank you so much for joining us for this um, interview. And for those of you who uh, want to learn more about the program, please go to drmaggie.com and check out our free training to learn more about it. And thank you for all the alumni that and people in the program that's been commenting in the comments section. Thank you so much. A huge part of our program is community. And you can see the demonstration of that underneath this video with the comment section. We have a very active alumni and community of people who've gone through our program. So thank you very much and uh, have a great night, everybody. Lupus, lung fibrosis, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, fibromyalgia, AS, which is a form of arthritis, bar, extremely fatigued, pretty much zero joint pain, much more happy. I don't have brain fog anymore. How much weight I have lost. I want to see remission. Maggie and her approach is very different than the traditional doctor. I'm a totally different person. I got a better understanding of what those intolerances were. You're not alone. The community is, I'm learning from all of everyone else's issues. It's not just helped me, it's helped my entire family. We are transformed. 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 Join the movement and transform your autoimmune naturally today.